we are at Old Trinity Cemetery. Now this was originally the place where the black people could be buried. It, it happens uh, in cemeteries. I've seen this in other cemeteries where they try to segregate things. They'll have by, by race and by culture and by religion. And then over time, the cemeteries expand and they end up just merging into one big cemetery. And that's what happened here. But this section of Oakwood Cemetery is called Old Trinity Cemetery. And I really wanna see, point out and tell you the story behind that obelisk over there. Now an obelisk is an ancient Egyptian symbol that was adapted by Christians. Our founding fathers, in fact, who were Christian, they adapted it. Now to the ancient Egyptians, it to them it meant their, that they worshiped the sun god Ra. And when I was little, I used to think, why on earth, you know, how weird to worship the sun. But when you think about it, everything on our planet relies on the sun. So it makes sense by worship it. I guess they had a very respectful, a lot of respect for the sun. And so when the Christians adopted this symbol, uh, they took it to mean it's the connection with uh, our connection to heaven and earth. So let me back up again to the uh, Egyptians, the top of that Mom, the top of that obelisk, that represents a ray of sunlight. That's where the sun comes in. And a lot of times they would actually have put gold around that in a traditional obelisk. They would have made that, plated it with gold. Sometimes you'll even see that in cemeteries or on obelisks that you'll see in antique stores or wherever. That top part will actually be painted gold or have some sort of gold metal, gold leafing or gold metal on it. Now where the bottom of the obelisk is, that represents the connection to Earth. So what an obelisk symbolizes is the connection between heaven and Earth. So for Christians, you know, I'm, well, let's get back. So for, you know, the ancient Egyptians, that was, they worship the sun god, Ra. So the sun coming in and connecting with Earth. Now when the Christians adopted that as a symbol, it stands for our connection to the, oops, sorry, sorry. <laughs> our connection to the Heavenly Father. So that top part there, that's the sun coming in, and that's where, that's our connection to heaven, and the bottom is the earth. That's us living here on earth. That's a connection with mortals. Now it's often used as a, as a centerpiece to a family plot, and so you might have an obelisk with, and you'll usually see smaller ones, kind of like, let's say that one over there, or I think I just, I've been passing by them. Now I'm all sunlit, sorry guys. All right, but we'll come up a little closer. Like usually uh, when you see an obelisk in a cemetery, it's a little more modest because these aren't cheap to make. Uh, so anyway, it was it's a, a symbol that we've adopted into Christianity. So don't get upset. Sometimes people are worried when they see symbols that uh, were collected or borrowed from other cultures. We, we do that. We've been doing that since the dawn of time. We've been borrowing each other's symbols and it doesn't mean you've borrowed their beliefs. It's just you've incorporated them into your own belief system. So here we have probably a better look at this monument. This is one big obelisk, I tell you. Very grand. I will have to look up when I get home and find out how tall it actually is. But as you can see, it really towers over here. It was easy to find. Now the man who erected this, as I said, this is the black section of historic Oakwood Cemetery. And this man, he lived to the ripe old age of 84. He was known as Gooseneck McDonald. And he was a businessman, he owned a bank, he was a politician, very influential. And he had a good ability for, he was able to unite whites and blacks on many issues, which, I mean, we could use a lot more unity across all sorts of belief systems these days, right? People not getting along. But he had some, I guess, some great, I would love to have met him. This is one reason I love coming to cemeteries is, they really bring home history to you in a way that just reading about it doesn't. It's kind of cool to think of this man, William M. Gooseneck. I don't know why they called him Gooseneck. Maybe I can find out. Now it looks like some of his families are buried here in these plots. As I said, uh, obelisks often stand as the centerpiece to a family plot. 
They are patriarchal symbols, so oftentimes they just have the family name on them. And then you might see the family members buried nearby. Let's come up and see what this says here. Whoa, I gotta tell you the story. I haven't even told you the story. Let's pan around here. This is the coolest part. There is quite a reason why he put this, this monument here. You can't really see it now. Thank goodness, I can't really see downtown, but over there is downtown Fort Worth. And back in the day, this monument looked over, was in plain full view if you were in the building where the KKK held its rallies in Fort Worth. So he intentionally put this great big <laughs> obelisk right where they could see it when they had their meetings as a reminder of him, Gooseneck McDonald. Now, we're very backlit, unfortunately, right now, but let's see what it says. Born in Kaufman County, William Gooseneck Bill McDonald became active in politics in 1890. His ability to unite black and white voters led to his prominence as a leader of the black and tan faction of the Republican Party. He remained influential, serving as a delegate to many state and national conventions until the decline of the Republican Party in Texas in the early 1900s also active in black Masonic societies. Oh, you know, I had never thought about there being black Masons back when I was a rainbow girl, um, which is uh, the, the teenage version of being a Mason. Uh, you know, I, I, we had, it didn't matter. You could be black, Chinese, whatever. But uh, I guess, you know, this was a while ago. There were black Masonic I can't say it, societies. He served as state secretary for 47 years. He moved to Fort Worth in 1906, founded the Fraternal Bank and Trust Company, and was a prominent civic leader. So here you go. And this, I tell you, was a pricey monument. I read that he was a millionaire. And a millionaire back then? Holy moly. That was really very rich. I mean, I'm not a millionaire, but still, to be a millionaire in his day, that was really something. Okay, I'll be looking up more about him. And what a fascinating story, am I right? Thank you.